please pray with me before I offer a message this morning. Gracious, loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, have you had enough time to write down your hymn requests? If so, um, we're going to ask the ushers to come in and collect those, and you can just, when they appear, you can um, just hand those pink cards to them, and the ushers will then bring them over to Scott, please, and, um, and he will sort through them and work his magic later on in the service as we sing thanks and praise to God. Meanwhile, I'll talk about the power of music, and the power that we hear about in the scriptures today is that music has the the power to set us free. It bursts Paul and Silas from the bonds of prison. I think this is one of the reasons I like the name Silas for our younger guy over there who's pretending not to hear me. Uh, so <laughs> um, that is the name of our younger son. This is one of my favorite stories because at midnight, Paul, St. Paul and his good friend Silas were singing praises to God. They were in jail, but they were still singing praises to their creator, and they were... Uh, also uh, worshiping and praying, and suddenly those jail doors burst open, and the, uh, of course the prison guard felt that he might be punished by this, perhaps he would be even uh, killed for doing this, and so he was about to take his own life, but then Paul and Silas invited him to a faith in Christ, which he did receive, and his whole family came to that faith in Jesus' love. Um, it's a song of liberation in music, and we're invited to think this morning about how when we, sometimes when we praise God, when we enjoy this gift of music, when we sing God's praises and focus on our blessings, our spirits are freed. Freed from pessimism, freed from despair, freed from frustration. I'm mindful of how last year at annual conference I was stewing about some of the um, politics and it was getting kind of ugly. In fact, I felt that some people were even manipulating some of the votes. It was, not a, it was an unpleasant feeling of some of the political wrangling going on at annual conference last year, and it was to the point where I didn't really want to sing at first when we gathered in worship. But then when we did, I, just, I realized I am not singing God's praises to the administration of our church or to the political uh, institution. I'm singing praises to God and trusting that God will straighten out the human foibles of our annual conference, and that released my soul to sing, and suddenly I could focus on God's blessings once again. Perhaps you've had these experiences where the blessings of God have come back into focus while you sing, while you praise God, while you summon to your memory those things that are good in life and praiseworthy. It's an important exercise, isn't it? It's why we come here on a Sunday morning to remember all of those things that we should give thanks and praise about. Music is such a rich heritage of this church. It's something that we're pretty good at, and it's a wonderful blessing to come here under the leadership of our talented musicians and to think about how God calls us to praise with the gift of song. This is something I've learned about in the last couple of years here. I've been now, here now three years. Uh, as of July 1st, time has flown. My family and I have been uh, serving this church since um, uh, three years ago. And one of the things that I've learned that I did not do before is that it's powerful to bring music to the bedside of someone who is ailing and in their last days of life. Uh, a couple of church members encouraged me to bring my guitar and go sing with those people who are at that stage in life. Um, Marianne Jones said, bring your guitar to see, uh, when you come see Ma Margaret Dispinet. And I began to do that, and I learned that this was because Margaret is a musical person to the depth of her being. She was saturated in music. So uh, she would say to me things like, my grandfather knew how to play every instrument in the band, and my mother could sing like an angel and uh, this was who she was. Have you ever met someone like this who is not only musical, but it, they are music. This person just, music makes them work. This is who Margaret was. It doesn't happen for everyone, what it, but it certainly happened for her when I would bring that guitar, when we would sing hymns by her bedside. She would begin to relax, and the anxiety would vanish from her face. She would focus once again on God's life giving love. 
But shouldn't we do this all of the time? Isn't this the way that we should live every day? When our hearts are tempted to focus and dwell on darkness and bad news and despair or self-pity, shouldn't we return to praise and thanksgiving for all that is good, for every blessing? This is the invitation of the scriptures to think, give thanks and praise. This is why we will have a hymn sing uh, for the second half of our service today. It's all, the other reason that we sing is what we read in Romans. The idea that God's grace has already been given to us, that which we hope for, that which we expect, is not in the future, it is now. It is the grace of God that is a free gift to us in this moment. In this wonderful passage where Paul encourages those Christians who are suffering, we hear him say, that we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Spirit. And then he says, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's not something that we wait for, it's not something that we earn. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He already did that. It's a gift we've already been given, his life, death, and resurrection. It's a gift we receive as soon as we open our hearts to receive it. This means that we're already in heaven, that when we sing, we already sing like the choruses of angels gathered around God's throne, giving thanks and praise eternally to God. This is already true of us. This was the power of the song that Paul and Silas sang in those prison doors that burst those prison doors free. It was a heavenly song and earthly prison doors could not contain it. They were broken open. This is the way that we're invited to live and to sing as though we're already in heaven. And to go to those people who are poor and lonely and brokenhearted, those who live in a living hell, and bring a heavenly song to them to sing those notes of thanksgiving and praise. So today, let us sing our songs of freedom, our songs of joy, as we give thanks and praise and sing these songs that we love so dearly. May it be so. Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, free our hearts to sing your songs of praise. We lift our eyes above the dark troubles of this world to seek your will and your way. We lift our voices in song until our hearts are brought back to a spirit of hope and peace. We sing today as we will sing one day in heaven. We sing for your glory and for the sake of all those who long to hear encouragement and love. May our songs never cease. Let them continue to our last breath and beyond when we will join with choruses of praise in heaven in the name of God, our Creator, our Savior, and our Comforter. Amen. Let us sing.